My name is Lydia and I am on the team that is coming together that's behind this app and I wanted to make this video because it's just the fastest way of getting across uh, some of the key points around this app that we're building and uh, they really are very important points so I want to be as clear as I possibly can about them. So I am going to show you the app um, after I tell you just a few things. So. Firstly, the app is not approved by the Irish government for release to the general public. So at the moment, this is just testing and development. There is several solutions being worked on, and at the moment they're evaluating which solutions they're gonna go for. And we, the people who are uh, working behind this app, are more than happy to row in behind any solution that is, is chosen. So uh, that's the first thing. This is not yet approved for general release to the public. And this is just testing. So this app is not the real thing. This app is not going to tell you um, anything about whether you are at a high risk of uh, contracting the virus. Uh, we hope that we will be able to do that for the actual and release to the general public, but that is not what's happening for this version. So um, all of your data might just be deleted and you might come back to the app if you're using the beta version and there might be no data. And that's because I'm very sorry, but we're not using the data anyway. And I need to be able to, we need to be able to change the uh, database that's behind this as quickly as we can. So that's the reason for just your data being deleted. So expect changes and crashes in the app if you're using the beta version. Um, we are uh, based in Ireland, although we're getting help from across the, around the world. And we are working with Irish public institutions on this. So our first, uh, if this app is approved, it will be Ireland that it is released in first. Now, we have applied for the EU Emergency Fund and um, we are absolutely um, planning on how this is going to work for different countries. But just so you know, at the moment, this is just um, focused on Ireland and getting it working in Ireland first. And then if it is appropriate, if it's working, it's getting up. Third thing I want to say before I show you the app is that we are extremely privacy oriented. So what we are going to do is we are going to completely delete the data as soon as, as it is no longer relevant for containing the virus. So I can't put a figure on how many days that is, but I want you to know that that is my absolute um, direction on privacy. The data is not going to be used for any other purpose. It's not going to be stored in it for any future research project that, but because the, the, even though that would be beneficial, the costs, the, the potential ways that could go wrong outweigh the potential benefits. So um, the data will be deleted as soon as it's no longer relevant for the COVID-19 crisis but I can't put a, a date on that for obvious reasons. <coughs> so what's the app? It is a way for you as a member of the general public to track who you met that day and where you went. So let me just open it here. At the, this is the home screen of the app and at the top it says today and here you can see it says contacts and places. So there's, there's room at the bottom here for some other features that we're working on but they uh, won't be released just yet. So when you open the app you see a list of your regular contacts. So you can choose 
who you want to have on the main page. So I have Sarah down twice, um, Tim and Tom and Tony and Anna. So if I have met Anna that day, I tap on her name and a little pop-up box comes up and it asks, did you meet Anna today? And I did. And you can see a tick comes up in the box. So that's as simple as it is. It's good. It's a very powerful thing to do. It's a very simple thing to do. It's a very, very powerful thing to do um, for contact tracing. So uh, working out who would probably have contracted the virus and needs to get a test in case some in case you or somebody else tests positive for the virus. So the next um, section is places. So while we're all social distancing at the moment, people, we're not going out so much, but we still have to go out, obviously. So uh, some people still have to go to work, some people still have to go to doctors, some people still have to go to dentists, some people still are going to church. So again, it's the exact same thing. You just tap on a, oh, close the app there. You just tap on a place and a little map shows up for where it is. And it asks, did you go here today? So obviously I did. <laughs> and for the purpose of this demonstration, and a tick comes up in the box. So uh, that is the basics of the app. We are inviting you to opt in to automatic location tracking. So if you opt into that, there will be a coordinate, your uh, latitude and your longitude taken every 15 minutes and uh, that's an opt-in feature and it is an extremely valuable one for contact tracing so we hope that you uh, opt into that but we of course understand if you don't want to do that for whatever reason so um, there are lots of features in development at the moment you can see maybe have a hint of what they are at the top here, scan a QR code and show your QR code. So, um, just, this is a, what a QR code is. And there, this might be used throughout the app. So uh, you'll, I'll make another video about that when we release that feature. So um, that's just a, a heads up. I'll just show you how to create a contact. There's a plus button up here. And that will actually show you all of your contacts first, even those who aren't your regular contacts. And if you want to make a completely new contact, then you hit this button up here. And it says contact name, and then show contact on the main screen of the app, and then it put, that's to put in their phone number. But you don't have to put in their phone number if you don't want to, or the person may not have a mobile phone number. So let's talk about mobile phone numbers. Um, we have limited the way to use this app to just mobile phone numbers. So you can't sign in with your email, you can't sign in with Facebook, you can't sign in with Google. And there is a reason for that. By getting everybody to sign in using their mobile phone numbers, we are able to join up people within the system. So I have, I'm me, and then I have my friend Anna, and we both have mobile phone numbers. And if we both sign up with our phone number, then, and we both have each other's contacts in each other's phone book, then we can automatically connect on the app in the exact same way that uh, messaging apps like WhatsApp and Telegram do it. So it's just a way to quickly get your contacts into the app if you want to, but it also, enables the contact tracing between people to establish the chains of transmission of events uh, in, in the best way that we can. So um, we hope also that you opt into that. Um, if you have a relative and they don't have a mobile phone number, they don't use a smartphone, you can still put them into the app and we strongly encourage you to do so because even if somebody is not using the app, if you add them as a contact on the app and you record your, when you met them, they will still benefit 
from they will still benefit from you logging recording you meeting them so i am still going to put in my nana here but i'm that would just be for demonstration purposes because i'm not visiting my nana at the moment because of social distancing so if you are visiting relatives and people who don't use smartphones we still strongly encourage you to log them as a contact because that way they can still benefit from all of the contact tracing that's going on so I will, I'm happy to make more videos explaining all of the little details of the app and um, if you have any questions about it, please address them to us, but uh, I ask you to email Anna and her email is in the on the forum if it's a general question. And if you are a developer and you want to get on the team, uh, please email me and uh, my email is also on the forum. We need people who have experience with React, React Native, and GraphQL. We're using Apollo uh, client for the GraphQL aspect, and we're also using Hasira, but a strong developer will be able to learn those uh, technologies within a few days. So even if you're not familiar with GraphQL, you should be, because it's so incredible, and uh, you will be able to learn it um, very quickly uh, if, you, if you put your mind to it. So don't let that stop you from coming on the team. Um, and you won't be starting from scratch, obviously. So uh, if you want to join the team, there, there uh, is fund available for developers. And uh, please contact me directly with developer in, in capital letters at the top of the email. Thank you very much and good night.